Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to give you guys a buying list uh, for black powder revolvers, okay? So the situation is if, if you find yourself, you know, in a position where you don't have firearms, and right now we're in, you know, we're in the middle of this coronavirus epidemic, and we're facing the possibility that within the coming month or months, you know, uh, you know, because of shortages, you know, supply shortages, food shortages, who knows, uh, there may be, you know, riots, looting, who knows, and, and you basically you need to have some form of home defense. Um, if you find yourself in a situation where you don't have any guns in your home, and there might be many reasons for that, um, it might be that, that, that you're not at your permanent home, or it might be that your guns are at your vacation home and you don't, you know, you don't have any at your permanent home. Uh, it might be that, that your permanent home is in a state where you can't have them. Um, you know, whatever your situation is, if you find yourself without firearms and you need to get them fast, these, these black powder firearms are, are, um, are, a, are a solution because these are not considered firearms by federal law, so they can be shipped to your house. And, and this is the one that I keep uh, in my office hidden. Um, you know, I keep it loaded. You can see the, the balls are in there, right? You can see there's, there's lube over the, the balls to prevent chain fire. Uh, you can see I got the caps in the back. So th this type of revolver, it's a single action only, so I have to pull the hammer back before I shoot the gun. Um, uh, this, this gun here, this is the, um, the uh, 1851 Colt, uh, and it's got a short barrel. Um, you know, this has about the same power as a 38 Special, okay? Uh, if you get the... 1858 Remington, um, you know, that has about the same power as a 9mm, okay? So, so these guns are effective uh, for home defense. They're not the best choice, but, you know, it's better than not having anything, okay? So, what I wanted to give, to, give you guys today is a buying list, okay? If you find yourself, it's yourself in a situation where you don't have any home defense and you need to, you need to be able to order something and have it shipped to your house, um, and, and you don't have the time to be fussing with, or you don't have the, the, the capability or the ability to, be, to go through a background check right now because everything is shut down. Um, you know, the, the first thing that you obviously need to get is, is a revolver, okay? So there's two choices. It's either the Remington 1858 or the Colt 1851, uh, and you want to get them in 44 caliber, uh, and Paeta is a good uh, manufacturer that you can get them from pretty cheap because I've seen other manufacturers um, you know that will sell these things for for as, as high as like four hundred five hundred dollars I mean I think I paid a hundred and twenty dollars when I bought this and this was like within the last ten years usually around Christmas time you can get these uh, 18 you know if you go to a Cabela's website usually you'll be able to get the Colts um, for about a hundred and twenty dollars and you can get the Remingtons for maybe $185. Now, granted, at, you're not going to get those Christmas specials now. You are going to pay a premium price, okay? Uh, if And that's even if they have them in stock because they're probably selling pretty good. Um, but, uh, but, but these are the guns that you want. And Paeta is a, is a really good company. I've, I've been using these, you know, the, their revolvers for a long time. Uh, and I load them pretty hot. Um, you know, I, I've, you know, on the Remingtons, I've, I've been able to actually achieve energies close to 400 foot pounds, which is basically like a 40 cal, you know, and that's, but that's using a conical bullet, like a 220 grain, um, you know, conical. So the, the point is that these, these are po more than enough power, uh, to use in an emergency situation. Now, now here's the thing, there is a, a, a learning curve. Okay. Um, you know, even if you shoot firearms, you know, there's a, there's a whole process to loading these guns where basically, you know, you have to put this, I'm not going to do it because this gun is, is obviously loaded, so I don't want to fuss with it too much right now, but I'm going to link a video in the comment section where I show you guys how I load this gun. Uh, so you want to put this in the half cock pos uh, position. In the half cock position, the, the, the cylinders are going to spin, and then what you do is you drop powder into the, um, you know, into the chambers, then you take a ball, you put the ball there, and then you press it down with this loading lever, right? So you actually seat it, okay? Um, and then what you do is you take some, some, some uh, lube, you know, um, and the lube basically just prevents chain fire so that the spark from one chamber doesn't ignite the other chambers. You put lube on the front. You can see that white lube that's now dried out there. Um, and then you put the caps in the back. Okay, you see how they, you got, I got the caps in the back over there. 
Okay, so so that's how you load this. So you know, learning to do this um, from just watching a video is is you know it's kind of like trying to learn how to fly a helicopter or something. You know, just watching a video. Okay. Um, not that it's that complicated, but the point is that I didn't want to say learning to drive a car because with a car, you know, people usually, when they're growing up, they see their parents driving a car. You see, so, you know, when you, when you try to drive a car for the first time, you've seen other people drive a car. But if you've never seen somebody load uh, and shoot a black powder revolver before, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to do it just based on the video, okay? Um, and, and the thing is, a lot of shooting ranges, especially indoor ranges, they won't even let you shoot these guns. So you got, what I recommend is you find somebody like me in the area that um, has has uh, experience with these guns and basically just schedule a, um, you know, a private training session, you know, where, 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 you know, you're able to actually practice shooting the guns, okay? Uh, I mean, you, you, you know, if you live in the city, you're probably going to have to travel an hour, two hours, whatever, even three hours outside of your city. Uh, but, uh, but it is, you know, I mean, the experience will be worth it. You know, uh, rather than just trying to load these up for the first time in your, in your apartment or wherever you're at, and then just kind of hoping that they work, you know, when you need them. Okay, so um, now as far as the buying components, right? Because when you when you show up to somebody like me, you got to have all the right components so that you can be trained on. So you need you need the revolver, right? Like I said, uh, only a Remington or a Colt 1858, 1851. Uh, Payette is a really good cheap company. Uh, only get the 44 cal. Don't, the reason why I say don't bother with a 36, um, with a lot of the 36 calibers, what they usually do is they use the same frame, and then they just drill, drill the holes a little bit smaller. Okay, so 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 you're actually getting a heavier gun that just has less power. Okay, so so that's why I say just get the 44 cal, um, and and basically that's going to immediately bring you up to the. Um, you know, it's going to bring you up to the power of, of, of either, you know, somewhere between the 38 special and a, um, you know, and, and a, um, a nine millimeter. The original Colts, when they were like 30s, they were 36 caliber. Um, the guns were actually much lighter. So if you, you know, carrying a 36 caliber Colt, you know, was much lighter than let's say a 44. Remington today there is there's really not that much weight saving so just, just get the 44s um they'll be cheaper too just because more of them are made okay so next thing you need is ball right you gotta have ball you know basically what you normally refer to as the bullet okay the thing the projectile um the main uh, uh options are 451 right so that's really 0.451 but they refer to it as 451 so that's basically point 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 Okay, uh, but normally the package will just say 451. Now here's the thing: when you seat the ball, right, and that's that's basically the process where you you you're, you're pushing it down, right, to seat it. Um, you you're going to be shaving a ring off. Okay, and what that and the reason is because the ball is slightly bigger than the chamber, and, and the lead is soft. So by pressing it in and shaving the ball, you're getting a really tight seal. Now the tighter that that seal is. Um, the more pressure has to build up behind the ball in order for it to start moving. Okay, so so it, so if you get a like like usually I I don't like using the 451s because they're really easy to see, uh, but but you, there's like a huge loss in power because basically you just you just push it in and there's like almost no shaving. Okay, 450 the 454 is pretty good. 457 is even better. But now that takes. You know, you really gotta press that in and, and get a good shaving. So if you got some good strong arms, yeah, get the 457. Um, otherwise, get the 454. Uh, the 454 is gonna be, you know, is is probably the most common one too. So that's probably your best choice. That'll that'll give you some sh some of that shaving when you press it. You see like a little ring that comes off, and that'll give you a nice tight seal. And that tight seal, like I said, it it uh, number one, it it creates a a seal so that. It reduces the chance of a chain fire if, you, if for any reason you don't have lube on it. And that's where the spark jumps from one chamber to the other and all the balls shoot at once. Um, and, uh, and But more, you know, I mean, you will be using lube. So uh, what it really does is it, it, it keeps the ball in place for like a split millisecond longer so more pressure builds up, okay? Uh, and then and then because because it takes a little bit longer for more pressure to build up, you get more power when, when, when it does finally start moving, okay? So, so that's what you're, you're going to need. Ball. Next, you need powder. Okay, basically that's you know uh, you know it's not gunpowder. It's black powder. 
Um, now you can also get black powder um, substitutes. Now usually if they're shipping this, you're gonna have to pay a hazard fee, usually something like $25. Um, for that and the caps, which I'll, we'll, I'll talk about next. So you wanna order your, your, your powder and your caps from the same place. Uh, this way, um, this way uh, you don't have to pay like a hazard fee to two separate places. Uh, you're only paying it one time for the combustible components, okay? So black powder, uh, for revolvers, we usually use triple F. Uh, so sometimes it'll, it'll say F, F, F. Sometimes it might say, you know, it might say uh, it might, like three X's and an F, whatever, but it, it's, or it might actually say the word triple and then F, but you want triple F. If you can't get triple F, the double F works fine too. Um, you know, it, it's just that the triple F is a little bit more fine. So because it's finer, um, you know, you, you can get a little bit more powder in there, but uh, um, the, the double F works just as well. I've used it, you know, um, and, and, and the thing with black powder, it, it compresses. So even though the, uh, the, the grains on the double F are a little bit bigger, you, when, you when you press that ball in there, it'll squeeze all that together. Um, and this is an important factor with black powder. See, black powder relies on compression um, to, to, for its maximum effect. So if you just put, you know, if you just put a little bit of black powder um, in the revolver, you're really not going to get the same power. So there's a big difference between, um, between let's say, putting like just 30 grains in the, in the Remington 8, uh, 1858 and putting 35 grains. Um, you know, the, the reason is because when you only put 30 grains in the 1858, uh, when you, you know, there's not enough powder in there so that when you seed it, uh, the ball actually compresses the powder. But when you go up to 35 grains, now that ball actually compresses it. And just think about a stick of dynamite. You know, basically the thing that makes a stick of dynamite effective is that it's tightly wrapped. Okay, so, so you need that compression. If I take the 35 or even 40 grains of black powder and just put it loose on the table and throw a match to it, it's not going to go, it's not going to explode. It's just going to go, it, it just, that's all it does. And, you know, it, it doesn't, so it needs that compression in order to, you know, to, to get that power. Okay, so, so compression is important. So. Uh, going back to powder, you, 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 ideally you want triple F, double F will work. Uh, there's also 4F, which uh, is a little bit too fine, uh, it's, it, and it's not recommended because you can, it can create an overpressure. Um, although, I, when I've tried it, you know, I mean, I've experimented with it, I didn't see it. Um, I saw no real difference in power or anything. But the point is, let's just, you know, triple F or double F. Um, and, and that, you know, that's, that's black powder, okay? Um, now you can also get what they call black powder substitutes, okay? And two examples are Pyrodex and Triple Seven, okay? Uh, and there's other ones out there as well. Uh, and it will say it's a black powder substitute and it will give you the F ratings, okay? It will also tell you where it will say it's a triple F equivalent or a double F equivalent. So they'll use that term. They'll, they'll use the term equivalent, okay? Um, so so you, can, you can get these. The, you, the Pyrodex and the Triple uh, Seven, they, they tend to be a little bit more powerful for the same amount of grains, okay, so they're close, so you might get like an extra 5% of power. Um, and they tend to also be a little bit cleaner when you go to clean the gun. They tend to, run, they tend to burn a little bit cleaner. Now, black powder guns, when they shoot, you know, um, they get dirty fast. I mean, uh, you know, um, I, I mean, you're going to see residue. I mean, if, if you go out to practice, you know, you'll see that after you fire, like, you know, if you go through like five or six, uh, cylinders of shooting, you're gonna see fouling start to build up. Okay, so so um, and you'll see that when you turn your cylinder, there's more resistance. You know, so so the Pyrodex and the Triple Seven, uh, you know, are a little bit cleaner. They do make up the cleanup work a little bit easier. Okay, uh, caps. Okay, that those are the caps that you're gonna put on the back over here, right? You see those little little caps over there? See that cap right there? Okay, so you're gonna need caps. Um, with the Pyatas, I uh, number ten are just perfect. Um, you can also get number eleven; they'll work fine. Number elevens tend to be a little bit bigger, and if I use number elevens, I just have to pinch the caps a little bit to make sure they stay on. So when I say you know, because it's the caps are circle, so if I see that the caps are a little bit oversized and they want to fall off, you just you just pinch it a little bit to make it oval, and and they'll go on there just fine. So if you can't get number tens, just get the number elevens. But number tens are are, are the perfect size. Um, next thing you're gonna need is some lube, okay? lube, you know, grease, 
or wads uh because they also make like these these circle wads that are pre-greased uh they tend to be more expensive i just use the lube if you can't find lube i mean you can use vegetable oil basically any you know any type of oil um vegetable you know you can put on a q-tip right usually i, I just use the, the the lube grease what i do is i dunk a q-tip into it you know and then i put the q-tip you know i rotate the the, the um the cylinder and i put q-tip uh, I put the Q-tip with the grease on it into each, um, into the front of each uh, uh, chamber over here. Um, and like I said, if you can't get the loop for any reason, cooking oil or any other oil, more oil, whatever, will probably do the same thing of making sure, you know, making sure that the sparks don't cause a chain fire. Uh, you know, and chain fires are rare, but they do happen. And that's basically if I fire this gun, you know, because there's a, there's a, there's a uh, um, an opening over here, right? You got uh, you got. There's a little bit of space between your your your, your cylinder and your barrel, and uh, and the idea is that a spark comes out, it goes into that that cylinder there, and then basically that one ignites, and, you know, it sets them all off. Um, usually, when you do get a chain fire, sometimes the caps fall off on the back, and the spark sometimes goes in through the back too. So, but usually, if, if the caps go on tight, okay, um, if you pinch them, and with the number times you really don't have to pinch them, they go they go on fine. Uh, they'll, they'll usually stay on. Okay, so you you need a lube. You need a a, a flask because okay? so, what you want to do is you want to take you know the, the, the powder it comes in a one pound container, um, and it's kind of hard to you know take a big container and pour that into these little holes over here. So what you want to do is you want to put it into a flask that has a a nozzle basically. Okay, so so and I and I say flask and funnel because you want to funnel so you can you know, hold your your flask. You know, put the funnel on top, then take your container and, and fill up your flask. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna want a dedicated funnel that you just use for loading your black powder pistol. Okay, um, and then you need some type of a measuring device. Uh, the measurements that you'll need is 30 grains, 35 grains, 40 grains. Um, you know, and they, there's a couple of different measures. Uh, you know, they, they sometimes they sell measures that will screw on top of the uh, flask. So that you can, you know, you know, it's it's easier to measure how much gunpowder is coming out of the flask, and I have a little thumb switch to cut off. Okay, if, if you're gonna, if you're if you're reloading, right, you want to be careful about loading directly from your flask into the chambers because after you shoot the gun, there could be some hot embers in the in the in the um. Uh, in the chamber that might set off the powder as you're loading it, uh, but but if the revolver is cold, if you're loading for the first time, that's not an issue. So you can you can load straight from your flask into the chambers. Okay, so you're gonna need some type of a measuring device: 30 grains, 35 grains, and 40 grains. Uh, usually for the Colts, I'll put 30 grains, and for my Remingtons, I'll put 35 grains or actually 40 grains for, because the Remington uh, chambers are a little bit bigger. Um, so, so, and I have, a, I have a lot of these guns I've been collecting over the years. And these are all reproductions. You know, I don't, I really, I don't collect antiques. I, I collect, I buy modern reproductions that are serviceable, that I can actually use. Um, and I, I talked about in another video, normally I keep my, my modern revolvers either in a holster on my body or in a safe, um, you know, and the reason is because these have serial numbers that are registered to me. You know, uh, you know the pistols anyway. Um, so, so I don't want anybody stealing my modern guns, running around town, you know, causing havoc. You know, so, so. But with with these guys, because you know these guys, I can keep hidden outside of the safe. You know, and, and I, again, I said hidden. I don't just leave them out in the open. Um, so if I need to get to them really quickly, I, I can get to them. So and I have a separate video on that. And obviously, I don't keep that in my home where the kids are. I'll keep this in my office. You know, in a situation, you know, in places where I know that um, my kids wouldn't be able to find them. And again, like I said, they're also hidden. Um, but uh, that's how I use um, the black powder revolvers for self-defense. Okay. But uh, like I said, the main point of this video is I wanted to give you guys a buying list. If you find yourself in a situation where you don't have a gun and you need a gun real fast um, and you can't get a modern firearm, um, you know these these guys are an option. But also, if you buy this, you know try to look up somebody um, who, who you know who's experienced in black powder firearms and does black powder training and get together with them. And you know you know you want to be able, you want to have shot the gun a couple of times. 
uh, before you attempt to use it for home defense. You know, uh, you know that makes all sense in the world, right? Uh, so, um, if you guys have got any questions, comments, please put in the comment section. Uh, if you're not a member of my channel, please subscribe. I'll talk to you guys soon.